deprivation in adults is really becoming an epidemic uh, these days with getting less and less sleep. With the less sleep we get, it can have major impacts on our health. The first one being, it can cause our immune function to be less. It can make it more likely for us to catch that cold if we get um, involved in an area where we might be exposed to it. It may affect our ability to control our blood pressure or our blood glucose levels. And then finally, it really can affect the ability to have a higher level of cognitive function. We might be a little bit more sleepy and not thinking quite as sharp as we should be. When we talk about what we need to do to optimize our sleep, the first thing we need to think about is getting enough of it. I think you need to get between seven and nine hours of sleep as an adult. Most of us are getting less than that these days. One thing we might do to try to enhance the ability to get enough sleep is first making sure we're getting in bed at the right time, and then we wanna set the tone before that. Put those iPads and electronics away at least an hour before bedtime, keep them out of the bedroom. And then think about the sun. When the sun goes down, dim the lights. And during the daytime, get as much natural light as you can to help your body stay alert. So both obstructive sleep apnea and insomnia are really common sleep diagnoses that sleep doctors see. The reality is, is they can often occur at the same time. When we talk about obstructive sleep apnea patients, the prevalence of comorbid insomnia can be anywhere between 40 and 60 percent. That's pretty significant. We need to think as sleep physicians about approaching both of these at the same time. Sometimes having to sleep with a CPAP mask might make things even worse. So we want to make sure we're addressing other factors such as making sure that a patient has a comfortable environment and is dealing with daytime stressors at the same time as treating their sleep apnea. The most common treatment for obstructive sleep apnea is CPAP therapy. The problem is patients don't always use it. So the key is, is really finding the right management with the right mask. There's many mask options. First, that's your first step. The second step is going to be making sure that you follow that patient longitudinally and track, is it working? Is the pressure right? Is there too much mask leak? There's all kinds of ways to intervene when problems occur. Mm -hmm.